Should you be passing another boat and you go in too far to the bank, eventually you're going to run aground, as we're going to demonstrate here. As the front runs aground, when you're on this angle, oh, there we go, we've hit the bottom. Because the back is still in deep water, you're able to reverse off gently. And as you reverse off, with any luck, the front will fall down the bank and in doing so push itself out towards the middle of the canal. You can see it there nicely twisting back towards the middle of the canal. Once you wait then for the boat to drift across, gently re-engage forward gear and off you go again. Nice and carefully just steering a very gentle angle away from the bank. If you start to steer quickly to the left hand side of course you're going to push that back straight into the bank. If you find that you're going to run aground again you will grab your pole and push the back off. But you can see we're going now forward just a very gentle angle away from the bank so she doesn't run aground again. Should you find yourself aground, which we have done here, obviously you can't drive off because to leave the quayside the boat will have to go around to the left which means the back will go into the right which will make the propeller hit the bottom so we're clearly into neutral. We then can ask the crew to grab their pole, push the boat gently off the bank. Nice and square. There you go. Once you're happy that you're in clear water, grab your tiller gently squeeze the trigger, off you go, nice and slowly. The Monmouth and Brecon Canal is very shallow in places, so always keep to the middle to avoid unnecessary grounding. There are two speed limits on the canal. The first is one mile an hour, which is just into gear without applying any revs to the engine. Cruise at this speed when passing moored and moving boats, and when negotiating all hazards marked with an exclamation mark in the canal guide. The upper speed limit is two and a half miles an hour. This is less than a walking speed. This increase is only a few revs above tick over speed. Speeding results in excessive wash which damages the banks. It also produces unpleasant noise and vibration levels. The faster you go, the more the back of the boat is sucked to the bottom, causing excessive grounding. You think you can't avoid um, a boat coming towards you or the bank, obviously put her into neutral, quick burst reverse, the boat will stop. When you do put in reverse, you lose all steerage weight, the rudder does absolutely nothing while you're going backwards and often the boat will start to pivot slightly when she stops. At this point she could easily cross the canal. If that was the case you can grab your poles off the roof, push yourself back, down the middle you go. But to show how effective the boat is, if you put your rudder hard across, hold it there, put it gently into gear, push her in a few revs, the boat will pivot very nicely from the middle, as you can see there, without going forward. Again, we're down, down, pointing down the middle of the canal, ready to go. There are some tricky bends and bridges where you'll need to help the boat around so that you don't hit the stonework and damage your boat. Should you come to a nasty bend, all marked with exclamation marks on the John Norris guide, and it looks like it's going wrong, the golden rule, of course, is to stop using reverse, grab your pole, Give the boat a nice gentle push off, making sure you're pushing off from the wall nice and square. Just push off from the wall nice and squarely. Watching that the end of the pole does not get caught underneath the cabin roof or get in contact with obviously the glass windows in the front door. Thank you very much. Nuts and us, there's plenty there. And off we go. Never hold the pole in front of the boat. It's not capable of stopping 10 tonnes of steel. The pole will either snap hurt you or damage the boat. Never push off with your hands or feet and don't try to stop the boat with ropes or poles 
always use the engine in reverse. Should you see a boat approaching and the canal looks too narrow, obviously, and if you're the furthest away from it, it's your responsibility to hang back to let the other one through. We now go gently across to the right-hand side on a very shallow angle. Never panic at this point. Just take the boat in nice and gently to the right on about a 10 or 15 degree angle. When you think the front is three to four feet away from the bank, slowly bring the bow back out again. And because you're pivoting from the middle, the front will come out and the back will slide in nicely behind you. Watch as the boat approaches that you don't swing the bow out too far by steering back again. I call it a check pace to make sure that front stays now nice and parallel to the bank. Sometimes this requires quite a, a large angle of rudder to put it so. As you get close to the bank, the boat suction effect with the bank will hinder your steering. So quite large corrections are required. As the boat goes past, you can slowly bring the front back out again, but watching the back all the time because remember you're pivoting from the middle and as the back closes the edge start to straighten up your steering. Here you can see a gap approaching, it's the width of a bridge, it gives you less than a couple of feet down each side of the boat so again it's important to look down one edge and as you approach look down the edge past it within 18 inches to two feet and keep the boat nice and steady as you go through. Do this all at low speed.